William Urey and Roger Fisher are the founders of the Harvard Negotiation Project. In their book, Getting to Yes, the authors explained that the worst mistakes come from one of these three areas, perception, communication, emotion. Let's start with the perception. People don't see the world as it is. They see it as they are. It's like everyone walks around with a filter in front of their faces, similar to the one voiceover artists use when recording. Everything you say passes through that filter and is interpreted based on their unique perspectives. Here's how perceptions of the same thing can be different. Tenant. I always pay rent whenever she asks for it. Landlord. She never pays until I ask for it. Tenant. The rent is too high. Landlord. The rent has not been increased for a long time. Tenant. She is cold and distant, never asks how I am. Landlord. I'm a considerate person who never intrudes tenants' privacy. Here are five tips to deal with the perception problem. One, don't let fears guide your assumptions. People often assume that whatever they fear, the other side intends to do. For instance, they met in a bar where he offered her a ride home. He took her down unfamiliar streets. He said it was a shortcut. He got her home so fast, she caught the 10 o'clock news. Why is the ending so surprising? Well, we made an assumption based on our fears. It is all too easy to fall into the habit of putting the worst interpretation on what the other side says or does. Two, discuss each other's perceptions openly. Here is how things look like from my perspective. How does it look from your perspective? Three, put yourself in their shoes. How you see the world depends on where you sit. It's not enough to study them like beetles under a microscope. You need to know what it feels like to be a beetle. Four, don't blame them for your problem. Instead of saying, you broke your word, say, I feel let down. Instead of saying, you're racist, say, I feel discriminated against. This conveys the same message without provoking defensive reaction. Five, involve them in the process of developing solutions. If they feel excluded, they are unlikely to approve the outcome. Participation increases acceptance, even if the terms aren't ideal. This is the most critical factor in whether the other side accepts the solution or not. For example, if you fail to ask an employee whether he wants an assignment with responsibility, don't be surprised to find out that he resents it. If you want the other side to accept a disagreeable conclusion, you must involve them in the process of reaching that conclusion. Agreement becomes much easier if both sides feel ownership of the ideas. Now let's talk about communication. Whatever you say, expect that the other side will almost always hear something different. Why? Because people don't listen to understand. They listen to respond. You might agree with this, yet you likely make the same mistake. While the other person talks, you're already thinking about the response that you will give once they stop talking. This is a huge problem. So how do you communicate effectively? First, listen to understand not to respond. Once you understand, simply tell them what you understood. Sum it up and give it back to them in your own words. For example, did I understand correctly that you're saying... This has two huge benefits. Number one, you make them feel understood. The best and simplest gift you can give to the other side is to make them feel heard. Number two, this ensures you accurately understand their point of view. Remember, understanding it is not agreeing. You can understand and still disagree completely. It is in your interest to make them feel understood. If they don't feel it, they won't listen to you when you are talking. They'll think. I told him my view, but now he's saying something different, so he must not have understood it. Instead of listening to you, they'll be thinking about how to rephrase their argument so that you finally understand them. By the way, People often raise their voices because they believe speaking louder will firmly make you understand them. So make them feel heard by summarizing what they said. You can also ask them to summarize your point to ensure they understood you correctly. Here's what I usually say. Could you please sum up what I just said to ensure I explained it well? I sometimes get carried away and don't communicate effectively. If you noticed, I shifted the focus to me in my explanation. This way, you're not attacking them or questioning their understanding. So remember these three key points. One, listen to understand, not to respond. Two, summarize what you understood to make them feel heard. 
three, ask them to do the same. Finally, let's talk about the third area, emotions. In a bitter conflict, feelings matter more than words. The parties may be more ready to fight than to find a solution. Emotions on one side can stir up emotions on the other. Strong feelings can quickly end a negotiation. So how to deal with emotions? One, openly discuss both your emotions and theirs. You can say, our side feels mistreated and very upset. We're afraid an agreement won't be kept even if we reach one. Whether it's rational or not, that's how we feel. I think our fear might be misplaced, but that's how we feel right now. Do people on your side feel the same way? Two, let them talk about their frustrations. People feel relieved by simply recounting their resentments to an attentive audience. Imagine you come home angry and want to talk about all the terrible things that happened at work today, but your partner says, come on, let's just go for dinner. I'm sure you've had a bad day. How would you feel? The answer is obvious. When you're angry, you just need someone to listen to you while you talk. You don't need a solution. You just need to vent. So if the emotions are high, allow them to express their frustrations fully. Just listen attentively as they talk about their resentments. Occasionally encourage them to continue until they've said everything they want to say. By handling the emotions first, you make it easier for everyone to work together. Once emotions are out in the open, people are more likely to move on toward finding a solution. If you don't handle the emotions first, they will just keep coming back, and at some point you'll find yourself or the other side screaming. Earlier, I mentioned this video is based on the book Getting to Yes. I've shared a summary of it before, so if you want to increase your negotiation skills, check it out. You probably see it on your screen. Thanks for watching and hope it was useful.